we're going to show you the fastest way to get started with MariaDB for application development. And so all you need is two things. You need uh, Docker installed on your computer. If you are new to Docker or you don't have it installed yet, I recommend installing this one, Docker Desktop, which is available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. So you just download that, install it, and you are ready. Now, the second thing you will need is uh, this application called Stackbricks, which is free, and also you find it um, for Mac, Windows, and Linux. Now, I have already installed these, so I can just go ahead and run stack bricks. And here I can create a new database. So let's call this MariaDB. The service is obviously MariaDB. You can create other kind of databases there. The version, hopefully you will use the latest version. And the password for, this is for the root user. It's going to be, in my case, root password one, two, three, exclamation mark. Let's check that it's correct. There we go. Save. Now we can just start this database. And uh, if you right click here, you find uh, um, options to delete the database or modify it and even uh, to copy a connection URL that we are not going to use. I can close these now and go to a terminal. And I'm going to show you how to uh, connect to the MariaDB database from inside this container. So this is running in a Docker container. What is that? Well, the first thing that I want you to do, let me actually make this much bigger, is to run Docker PS. So here you'll find um, this container. This is the name of the container. Well, this looks weird because it's because of the the zoom that I that I have placed in this uh, window, but but um, you get the idea, right? You'll see the name here. So I want you to copy that. It's going to be maybe different for you. And then just run uh, docker exec this option dash it and the name of the, mm, the container where MariaDB is running. Then we're going to use uh, or start a bash session there. You can actually run the MariaDB client from here, but just uh, bear with me for a second. Now we are inside this container, which uh, by the way, it looks like if it was a Linux machine, but it's not a Linux, it's not a virtual machine. It's actually a container. It shares the kernel with the uh, host operating system of this uh, Mac uh, uh, machine that I have here. Uh, but there um, you can see that MariaDB, the client is installed. So this is a, this is a client as opposed to the uh, server. The server is also running in this container. That means that we can connect to the MariaDB database from here. So. For example, MariaDB, well, if we, if we execute this, it's going to say, hey, no, maybe the password is, is wrong. You need to supply a password. So that's a, that's this is one way to, to do it. You can uh, supply the password here as well, root password123, if you want. If you don't put this uh, in the command line, then it's going to ask for it. Don't leave a space here because then it's going to ask for the for the um, the password. So let's run this. Now we are inside uh, the uh, the uh, client and we are connected to to the server, to the MariaDB server. So for example, what we can do here, we can show the databases that are available. So we can we can create one, create a database demo. There we have demo. Actually, this one. And uh, we can, uh, uh, what else? Well, something I would recommend you do, you don't have to do this, but you can create a user for your application, the application that you are developing. Now you can always use a root user, but I don't know. I think it's better if you create a user that it's uh, you know, similar to the one you are using in production. Let's, so let's create one, one user, create user. Let's call this app user. And then you say at from where this user is gonna be able to to um, connect, so it could be some kind of IP address here, uh, but uh, you can you can if you do a local host in the container, so it's not gonna be able to to connect from outside this container. Uh, so we need to specify something. So if my le local network was uh, 190 uh, one sixty eight dot uh, and my IP address, the host where I'm gonna run the application later was I don't know five and uh, six then I would specify that. Or if I want to connect from anywhere in this network, I could do this. Or if I want to connect from, definitely from anywhere, I could do this. This is fine for a, 
for a demo like this, I would recommend you try something, try to secure your data, even if it's uh, in a development environment. Uh, but I leave that decision to you. Mm, then we say identified by and the password. Now let's say here, password, one, two, three, exclamation mark. That's it. Now let's grant permissions to, to these um, users. So we can say grant. We could do all privileges, but that's uh, that's not the point. The point is to give it, uh, you know, the, the minimal amount, uh, number of permissions that are needed so that the application grants. Now, this is probably going to be, um, we're gonna, we're not going to develop an application, but probably it's a CRUD kind of application. So create would be insert, uh, CRUD read is uh, select, re, uh, sorry, update and delete. So these are all the uh, CRUD operations on what? On demo dot every, any table on demo, okay? Uh, two, and you have to specify this user again, okay? Don't, so now this user is able to see the data there. In fact, let's actually uh, create a table. I'm still using the root user here. So create table inside the demo database or schema there, the same in, in MariaDB. Let's create table, um, I don't know, T, column one, integer, column two, uh, uh, text. Right, whatever, it doesn't matter. Let's say show tables in demo should be there. Tables. It is there. We can insert, insert uh, into, if you want to type demo the, the something all the time, you can just use use t, uh, demo and it's, that's going to be the default, um, the default database from now on. So let's, uh, Let's describe the data, the table, and insert into that table uh, C1, C2. We don't need to specify actually the values here, but in, when you are coding, always always specify the columns. Don't 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 rely on the order of the database. If you change the schema later, it's gonna break, right? So values, and let's say uh, it was uh, a number and string, so one one. Let's do it this way. And uh, maybe another one or two. Here we go. Uh, it should be lowercase. There we go. I think this would be different in Windows. I don't know. Um, but um, you get the idea. So we have data there. In fact, we can select all the columns from. Also, don't do that ever. Just specify to. Well, for, for this demo, it's fine, right? This is not code that we're going to check out somewhere in some repository that's going to go to production. So it's fine. Select all columns from T. We should have the data there. Okay, so this is cool. And now we are ready to connect to the database from an application. So you normally will, um, let's exit all these, would use an IDE. I'm going to use a Visual Studio Code in this case, and you install there some plugin. You could be using any other tool. Uh, there's going to be a plugin or an extension or something to connect to databases. So let's create a new connection to MariaDB. Uh, don't use localhost here. Use the IP address, DCP address for this machine. Mm. And then we could use root, but well, that would defy the you know the purpose of the app uh, user. I think is what we created. And here I think it was password one two three exclamation mark. Well, let's see if that works. Connect. Uh, connect success. Okay, cool. That's that's nice. So now we have it here and we have demo and we probably have the table T and we can run queries from here. Uh, select all from T. There you go. Now how you connect to your database from your programming language, I'm going to leave that out to you. Uh, maybe I can add some links for uh, Java. Node.js and Python, maybe C++ as well, so you can uh, use these connection parameters to connect to the MariaDB database, store data, read data, and have a lot of fun. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.